So, last week we talked about network um, and communications. Um, we talked about different types of networks. Um, chapter chapter seven and eight are very very concept heavy. Um, this week we have we're going to talk about enterprise applications and under chapter nine it covers ERP. Um, Enterprise resource planning systems, um, customer relationship management or CRM, as well as um, supply chain management. So all of those types of systems are covered, and they're very those those three different types of systems um, are very um, related are related to one another. In that, a lot of times when organizations are um, are investing in an ERP system, they get supply chain management and customer relationship management modules or functionality built in along with those types of systems. So, um, so let's go ahead and jump in and talk about um, enterprise resource, enterprise um, applications. Okay. Um, when they say enterprise systems, now enterprise applications kind of covers ERP, CRM, SCM, supply chain, customer relationship management, um, ERP all together. Um, when your book talks about enterprise systems in particular, they're talking about enterprise resource planning systems or ERP systems. Okay, um, and ERP systems um, are usually these very large systems that. Um, include modules or pieces of functionality that you can, your organization can choose to include or not to include. Okay, um, and there's actually four kind of core modules that that they include. Um, it talks about these four different finance and accounting, human resources, manufacturing and production, and sales and marketing. So most ERP systems include functionality for the, these different areas. Okay. Um, now the thing about ERP systems is that it's ERP systems look at your organization as a set of business um, processes. Now remember toward the beginning of the class we talked about this idea of business processes, right? We, looking at your organization as a, a set of processes instead of a set of departments or functions. Okay, In a, for enterprise systems, for ERP systems, it's really important if you're not looking at your organization in that way, the ERP system is going to force you to look at your system in that way because that's the way that ERP systems um, are implemented. Okay, um, one of the, the kind of the big benefit that you get from um, using ERP systems is that you get all of the organizational data in one place. Okay, ERP systems um, have you know one you know very large database that keeps all of your organizational data in one place so that everybody can see the same data. You don't have duplication of effort. If you recall um, from the data, uh, the database chapter, we talked about some of the issues that you run into when you have data stored in multiple places, and your ERP system helps to alleviate those issues. That you may that you find when you have that type of setup, okay. Um, so again, the ERP systems, they there there are four core modules or four core areas that they tend to cover, okay. Finance and accounting, um, your human resources, manufacturing and production, and sales and marketing, okay. Um, in addition to those four areas, you you can add on things like um, CRM and SCM modules. Um, e-commerce modules, stuff like that, okay? Um, and, it, it, and this, your book makes it sound so easy to implement. So it says to implement, firms just have to select the different functions they want, you know, what core modules plus any extra modules do you want? Um, and then look at your business processes, your existing business processes, and match or map those business processes to what the ERP system wants you to do. The thing is, is that if you do things differently than the ERP system does them, there's you, most of the time you're going to have to change the way you do things to match the software. Okay, um, which if you've ever been in an organization when there's been major organizational change, 
Um, you know that people tend to not like change. Being told that this is the old way we were doing things, well, we're implementing this system, and now you have to do things the way the system wants you to do things. Okay? The thing about ERP systems is that they, they utilize best practices in the way that their business processes are set up. So most of the time when you change your business processes to match the system, you're actually getting the benefit of these best practices. You're actually going to, most of the time you're going to be doing things in a way that's more efficient, that's more effective, that's going to be more productive than you were doing things before. So. Um, all of the change that you're going to have to go through has its benefits, but again, with any organization, when you have major change, you have, um, you, you might have, you know, organizational uh, issues that, that stem from those, that type of change. Okay, so this kind of gives you an overall view of how these types of systems work, right? Again, an ERP system has that centralized database. Okay, and that's one of the key features of it is that there is one set of data that all of these different modules and pieces is plugging into. So when um, the finance and accounting module or application is looking at sales figures, right? Sales and marketing is looking at sales figures. They're actually looking at the exact same data. So you don't have any of the issues with multiple copies of the same data with possible um, possible data that doesn't agree, stuff like that. Okay, so for these, for ERP systems, some of the benefits to an organization include um, increased efficiency. And again, that comes from the fact that you have best practices that are built into the system that you get the benefit of when you use these systems. Um, you get uh, firm-wide information to support decision making. So you now that you have this collection of, of information that's available across the organization, it supports that decision making of, across the organization. Um, it enables you to rapidly respond to customer requests for information or products because again, you have um, information in one central place, it's faster and easier to get to that information because it's all in one system. You're really, it's really different pieces of the same system looking at that same data. Okay, and of course, they, they have analytical tools that are built into the system that enable you to, um, to gather and to um, come up with business intel, you know, business intelligence, some of the insights that business intelligence provides. Okay. Um, supply chain management systems or SCM systems. Um, when we're talking about supply chain management, you have to kind of think about what is a supply chain. Okay, a supply chain is a network of organizations and processes, and there's a, there's a certain um, there's certain things that allows you to do right with a supply chain. You're procuring raw materials you are turning those raw materials into a product and you are getting that product from your organization to your customers somehow, right? And so the supply chain is all the way from the raw materials to getting that product to your customer. It's, it, it encompasses every piece of that, okay? Um, your, your, your book makes, um, looks at the supply chain in two kind of different pieces, the upstream and downstream supply chain. Okay, and so your upstream supply chain has to do with the raw materials gathering, procurement of raw materials and getting those raw materials, right, into your, your organization. Um, now a lot of supply chains, for demonstration purposes, they talk about supply chains and it usually looks very linear, right, supplier, supplier, manufacturer, um, uh, distributor, wholesaler, um, ultimate consumer, right. Most supply chains actually look more like networks because um, a good manufacturer is going to have multiple suppliers for the same raw material, right? We talked about why it's a good thing to have multiple suppliers, right? You don't ever want to have a major raw material that you only have one supplier for because it's, you know, you're, you're, you're at their mercy as far as how much they're going uh -huh, to charge you for that. Right, so a good manufacturer is going to have multiple suppliers for every raw material that they need for their product, right? And so it's going to be this, this very complicated looking web with multiple levels of suppliers, okay? 
Your downstream has to do with getting your product to the customer. Okay? And there's different ways of doing that, right? You have different, every organization has different channels um, to sell their, their, their product and to, to actually reach the consumer. Some organizations sell directly to, um, you know, the manufacturer will sell directly to the, the, the consumer. That's actually, there's a term for that, it's called disintermediation. Okay, so other, other times you have distributors, retailers, you have different levels of, um, of downstream organizations that help you to get your product to your, your ultimate consumer. Okay, so again, upstream has to do with your supply chain um, and getting your raw materials. Downstream has to do with getting your product to your customer. Okay, now supply chain management systems um, help to um, cut, help to um, um, make sure that you don't have a lot as much um, inefficiency in your supply chain, um, help you to connect with different su your suppliers, share information across your suppliers. Um, if you have a good supply chain management um, system, you can, um, you can get the benefits of having a just-in-time type of inventory management strategy, which you can't do that without having a good supply chain management information system. Um, just-in-time inventory management is where you are using your raw materials, you're actually getting your raw materials just in time to, for those raw materials to enter into the production process. Okay. Um, you don't have you don't have uh, excess stock, your safety stock. You don't it, just in time. You don't actually have safety stock, okay? Or you have so little safety stock that uh, you know that if something were to happen, you might you know you might you might actually be in trouble. Um, so just a just in time strategy requires information system very um, very integrated information systems with your suppliers. Okay. Um, the bull now the bullet effect. If you don't have good, if you're a manufacturer and you don't have good information coming from your retailers who are who are seeing actual customer demand, um, you can end up with um, getting this sort of inflated demand that safety stock in your ordering um, can create. So let's take a, a quick look at the bullet effect in action. Okay. Whoever is selling directly to the consumer gets actual customer demand, whether it's a retailer, whether it is possibly even the t distributor or manufacturer selling directly to the, the customer. If you're seeing actual customer demand, you, um, you can plan accordingly as far as um, your production, all right? If you are not seeing demand, but what you're seeing is ordering, right? The retail, maybe the retailer orders some safety stock from the distributor so that the demand, this is what your customer, your actual customer demand looks like, but as it goes through the supply chain, that demand gets inflated, okay? It's an artificial demand that's created by the ordering of that safety stock, okay? Um, so what you have when it gets to the manufacturer and to some of the suppliers is you have this very inflated artificial demand that uh, where you have very you know very steep highs and lows where the actual demand from the customer you know is a, is a lot less um, volatile I guess would be a good word to, to do okay so this is the this is the bulb effect if you have good information systems you sharing actual customer demand from the retailer with the rest of the supply chain all the way through to your your different level suppliers it reduces the effect that the the bullet effect has on your supply chain okay so the bullet effect is a um, is a uh, a side effect of not having good information system integration across your supply chain okay so the bullet effect is not is not a good thing um, and good supply chain management integration helps to reduce that. Okay. Um, supply chain management software itself helps to um, 
helps organizations to model their existing supply chain. What does our supply chain look like? Um, it helps to plan for, it helps demand planning. What does your customer demand look like? Because demand, um, and there's two different ways of looking at supply chains, actually. Talk about the push and the pull model, okay? Um, most, um, most organizations use a push model, okay, in their, in their manufacturing process, which means they are, they are looking at, they're trying to plan for future demand. They don't, they don't know actual demand. They're planning for future demand. Okay? Um, pull, pull model is demand driven. This is where you're actually getting customer orders and you are producing your product based on those orders. So you're meeting those orders. Okay? Um, can you think of an organization, or a type of organization even, that uses a pool-based model? Where they are actually um, building or manufacturing their good in response to actual customer order. Well, um, think about um, the... Probably like the Chevy Volt or something like that. Huh? Okay, so um, some right there's some man car manufacturing manufacturing right where you you can't actually go to the uh, the the uh, dealership and purchase that car directly from you know if they don't have it in stock you have to order it right and the Volt is an example of that. Yeah, you have to be on a waiting list. Or something. Right. Um, ordering um, computers online. When you order directly from Apple or HP or Dell, right? They're they're actually those manufacturers when they are filling customer orders, they are selling directly to the customer. They are using a pool-based model. Okay, so any manufacturer that sells directly to the customer and not to a wholesaler or a retailer is using that pool-based model. Okay. So it helps with demand planning, and again. Depending on the type of model that you're using, some manufacturers are going to use both models, right? You're going to um, respond to actual customer demand, and and you're you're actually going to um, you know to, to do some forecasting of demand. Okay, um, helps to helps with your sourcing, helps with um, actually uh, finding and um, securing raw materials for your um, for your your uh, operations, helping to establish inventory levels, right, depending on the type of inventory management that you have, um, identifying transportation uh, modes, right, how are, you, how are you transporting your raw materials, your finished goods from one place to another in your supply chain, right. So these are, these are the things that your planning system does for supply chain. Your execution systems actually help to manage the execution of all of these different things that you're planning for, right? Actually sourcing your raw materials, um, planning for the different types of production, whether it is pull or push-based production, um, establishing those, you know, actually managing those inventory levels, um, keeping track of uh, finished goods or partially finished goods as they go through the production process or your, you know, your supply chain, okay? Now, organizations that deal with, um, that have global supply chains, they have all of those issues <coughs> we talked about. In addition to that, um, you know, the, with a global supply chain where you are dealing with suppliers or um, customers that are, that, that are overseas, Right, you have the you have the issues of greater geographic distances and time, you know, different time differences. Right, you have very more complex pricing issues because you're dealing with local taxes, transportation, other types of fees, um, different types of currency, um, foreign government regulations. Right, the regulations, uh, commerce regulations from one. Uh, country to another is going to be different, and if you're going to do business in a lot of different countries, you have to keep track of all of that. 
Okay. So the internet actually helps with to facilitate a lot of these different issues to, to facilitate um, the um, uh, these type you know helping an organization with actually sourcing their their raw materials, the transportation, um, especially when you're when you're global when you have a global supply chain. Okay. Um, now we talked, I, I mentioned and I kind of jumped ahead a little bit and talked about push and pull based, uh, based models. Okay. Um, information systems have helped to move away from the sequential type of supply chain management, um, supply chain where um, information flows from one, kind of from one company to another to a more concurrent type of supply chain and this is uh, sort of an example of this concurrent type of of, uh, um, of supply chain where, um, direction, sorry, um, where information is flowing in different directions simultaneously because um, you don't have, have to have information flowing from A to B to C to D. Um, okay. Um, this is a, you know, kind of a view of, um, of the bullwhip effect on a push and a pull based model. Okay, so um, the pu push based model again is where you are um, manufacturing goods based on a forecast demand. You are um, trying, to, you have an educated guess of what future demand is going to be. Okay, so you, you, um, you, Get your supplies based on a forecast. Your production is done based on those forecasts. Managing your inventory, um, your stock, and your you know, and then purchasing all based on what's on the shelves. Okay, um, and again, a lot of organizations use put a push-based model. Okay, the pull-based model, um, where you're actually supplying and producing to an order. You're act it's an actual demand type of. Um, type of model, okay? Um, and again, it, it all starts with what the customer wants instead of the customer um, basically taking whatever's on the, on the shelves, okay? So, so some of the benefits of um, supply chain management systems, um, it helps to match your supply to, to the demand um, it helps you to reduce inventory levels or keep track, better track of inventory levels, um, in, improving delivery service, helping to speed product time to market, um, using your assets more effectively because again you're keeping track of those assets better, um, increasing your sales and reduce supply chain costs um, over, you know, overall. Okay. Customer relationship management systems or CRM um, helps an organization to keep track of a customer and um, in the business environment that we find ourselves in as customers, as business people, um, organizations, organiza it's really easy for organizations to treat customers like a number versus an individual. Okay, as a, as a consumer, you can probably think of coming to mind many examples of being treated like a number by an organization because it's very easy for organizations to do. A CRM system helps cut organizations to treat customers more one-on-one -on -one than they would without the system, keeping track of customer information, enabling different parts of the organization to get access to that customer information. Um, so that when, if you are a, um, if you are a frequent customer of a particular hotel chain, right, and if it happens to be one of the, you know, the, the four or five star hotel chains where you're, you're spending a lot of money, right, um, some of these hotel chains, a big part of what keeps people coming back and spending the amount of money that they spend there is the fact that they keep track of the things that they like, right? They keep track of the, the type of room that they want. They keep track of the, um, the bedding that they want, the level of lighting that they want when they walk into the room. Um, things that, um, you know, things that 
make a difference in the customer experience and they put the, that information into effect um, because of these types of CRM systems. Okay? Um, so again, the CRM systems take all of the different customer touch points. A customer touch point is a way that a customer interacts with an organization. Okay, and there's many different customer touch points. Email, chat, telephone, go actually walking into an organization, uh, you know, regular snail mail, right? Talking to um, a, um, somebody who is installing, you know, installing something for you, right? Uh, technical service. There's all kinds of different ways that or people can get into get in touch with organizations, and these are all different touch points. The CRM system keeps track of all of those different touch points and has a very 360 degree view of the of the customer. Okay, it helps them to do that. Okay, so it gives you that single enterprise level view of a customer. Okay. Um, CRM systems, have, um, they sort of focus on three major areas of customer touch points, sales, marketing, and service. And you, if you think about it, in an organization, these are, these are three of the major areas that customers actually interact with the organization. When, they are, um, when the, the organization is marketing to their customers, when they are actually selling in one way or another their product to the customer and when there is some kind of service either before or after um, sales service right those are th three of the major areas that customer okay. uh, so CRM software the CRM system information system itself can range from a small niche system that helps a small organization um, Target a particular you know niche um, customer to large scale enterprise systems and the large scale enterprise systems these are the types of systems you're going to find associated with an ERP system okay um, but most um, of the very comprehensive CRM systems have partner relationship management PRM and employee relationship management okay and each one of these are basically utilizing the CRM type of um, of tools, but for your partners, which are you know um, other organizations that you have some kind of relationship with, whether it's a supplier, whether it's um, you know some other type of partner, or um, utilizing those same types of tools for managing the relationship you have with your employees. Okay, so. Um, Again, when you talk about CRM systems, they, they, the, big, the big comprehensive ones are going to include these types of modules in them. CRM system, the packages, they typically have tools for things like Salesforce automation, um, where you are equipping your Salesforce with information about customers so that they can more effectively do things like um, follow up on leads, they can um, do things like upselling customers or cross selling. Um, customer service, which is you would think is probably a very core part of the CRM system, managing the relationship you have with your existing customers. Um, and then of course marketing is a big part of this, right? Who are your customers? How do you market to them? Um, where do you spend your marketing dollars so that you get the most bang for your buck? How do you reach those customers? Right? There's so many different places that organizations can spend their marketing dollars that they really have to do a lot of research to figure out where and how they can reach um, at their prospective customers the best and really get the most for their, that, that marketing dollar. Okay? Um, so this is looking at how a CRM system supports marketing different types of, um, of marketing direct mail, right? Telephone, web, email, cell, cell phone, text messaging, right? This is just one example of one organization and how, they're, um, how they are spending their advertising dollars, right? But again, there's, for every organization, it's going to be a different marketing mix because you have a different set of customers that you're, you're pursuing. Some of the, 
again, the capabilities of CRM systems, and this just gives you an example of some of the major capabilities under those, those um, three different um, areas, your sales, marketing, and service that are the core um, areas that CRM systems, uh, CRM systems ha um, support. Okay. Now this is one example of a business process within a CRM system. This is loyalty, customer loyalty management process. Okay, And this is an example of one process you would find in a CRM system um, among you know pro possibly you know hundreds of processes that uh, a large CRM module would support. So here you have a service request. You're obtaining customer information from a database, a, 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 an existing database of customer information. Um, getting um, you know is the customer information available? If it's not, then you're going to route that information to the best agent because you don't have, you know, maybe this is a new customer, you don't have any existing information on them. If it is, then within the CRM system, they're going to do, they, they're, it may give them a, a score for that customer. How valuable is that customer? And based on that score, it's going to route that customer to a different customer relationship management person, a different customer service agent based on the value, the value of that customer. Okay? And that's just another thing that CRM systems allow, allow organizations to do. Looking at their customers and scoring and getting an idea of who are your high value customers? What does it mean for a customer to be a high value customer? What are the metrics that behind that type of analysis? Okay. Uh, so are they a high value customer? Are they very loyal? Right. If they are, then you might provide them with a different level of service than you would if they were not a, a, a loyal, high-value customer. Right? And again, CRM systems allow organizations to do this type of analyses and to get this type of information and make it available to their customer service agents. Okay. Um, most CRM systems have two different, um, two different types of CRM. Your operational CRM and your analytical. Okay, so if you recall, when we talked about databases, your operational um, CRM system is the CRM system that has that you're using your your day-to-day -day information is in. Okay, this is um, this the CRM that has your Salesforce automation and customer service uh, support information available. Your analytical CRM takes that information um, out of the out the operational CRM into this analytical CRM so that you can actually, it's sort of like data warehousing when we talked about operational databases versus your data warehouses, where you get that information into a special um, application. Here it's the, the analytical CRM that enables you to do some of the, the analyses like scoring your customers that you, you that are harder to do in your operation. And they do this, the operational and analytical, because they don't want to disrupt operations by, um, by, by doing analyses on the data in the operational CRM. Okay? And this is um, a kind of a look at an analytical CRM, the data warehouse, right? Uh, your customer data, your customer data warehouse. Um, where you can do different types of analyses, data mining, other types of analyses, right? And these are all the different sources of information that go into that, that customer database, that customer where, um, uh, data warehouse, okay? So some of the benefits of a CRM system to an organization Increased customer satisfaction, right? You're able to provide a higher level of customer service. Um, reduce direct marketing costs because you are able to pinpoint and more effectively manage your marketing uh, resources. Um, lower costs for customer acquisition and retention. These are very important, right? Actually spending the money to get the customer and once you have the customer, keeping the customer. We talked about the fact that it is much more expensive to gain new customers than it is to retain and resell to existing customers, right? Um, and reducing this churn rate, and the churn rate is this idea that customers, um, once they become customers, if you lose them, they kind of, 
you know, leave the customer life cycle. You have to spend the money to replace more money to replace that customer. Um, that it, you know, that money that if you were able to retain those customers, it would be a, a lot more profit and a lot less money that you're spending trying to. Um, to, to get new customers, make them aware of your, your product, make them aware of your organization, your service, all of that. You know, all that awareness costs a lot of money for an organization. Okay. Um, so, enterprise applications in general, um, which again, if you recall, enterprise applications, ERP systems, CRM systems, and SCM. Right, enterprise resource planning, supply chain, and customer um, relationship management all kind of go into that, that bucket, right? Very, very expensive um, to purchase and implement these systems, particularly ERP systems, but again, um, some of the, the, you know, you're looking at millions of dollars worth of information system that you are, you're implementing and maintaining over time. Um, these systems require a lot of different changes of, for the organization, technological, organizational changes, business process changes, right? Again, when we talked about the fact that um, if you're doing things in one way, if you implement an ERP system or some other enterprise level system, you're most likely going to have to change the way you do things to match the way that the system wants you to do. Okay. You may have switching costs if you already are. If you're using um, one vendor, you may end up having to switch to a different vendor depending on the level of system that you are implementing. Um, and then, of course, data standardization. Okay, because of the fact that these enterprise level systems have one large um, set of organizational data, customer supply chain um, data, organizational data in one place, right? You're going to have to standardize all of your other existing data sources to make, to make it so that those data sources play, so all that data plays nice, okay? Um, some of the next generation enterprise applications, um, moving toward um, applications that are a lot more flexible, um, enterprise suites, having applications, um, ERP, CRM, and SCM systems that come from one vendor so that all of those systems and all of that information, it can all work, you know, well together if you get everything from one vendor. Um, you're lucky, you know, it, there's a good chance that all of those systems will work well together. If you're, if you're picking and choosing stuff from different vendors, you have to think about whether or not they're going to interoperate well, okay? Um, open source and on-demand solutions. What's up? Do you guys know what on-demand means when you're talking about information systems? On-demand is where, you're, where you um, are able to um, get access to a system when you need that system, okay? So it could be web-based, it, um, it could be a system that you pay to use, trend, you know, uh, by transaction, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of these systems need to be compatible with mobile devices because a lot of um, business people and customers are moving um, toward mobile applications. Um, and then, of course, having analytical products that work well with your enterprise applications. Okay. Now, with these enterprise applications, um, we talked about the we we talked a little bit about this idea of having a service-oriented architecture, having um, this this idea of a service platform where you have different uh, information coming from different systems, um, different different um, applications, but on the surface, the way, that, the way that your stakeholders, your employees, your customers, your partners, the way they see all of the data, it, it looks very seamless to them. They don't actually realize that they're getting access to information from different systems, from different, um, uh, you know, different platforms, okay? Um, portal software is a way to integrate um, information from different applications, your enterprise applications, and to uh, integrate those with any legacy systems you may have. If you recall, 
legacy system is an existing system, an older system that you have that has um, in organizational information in it that you still need to get access to, but it's too expensive to pull all of that data out of that, that legacy system, uh, put it into the right format so that you can put it into your new system. So you basically have some kind of middleware to connect that legacy system to your newer systems. Okay, so a portal software is a way of making it so that users of this, these applications don't realize that they're getting information from different places, from your, your, your new systems and your legacy systems. Okay, this is one example of um, a composite system, again, where you are, um, you are integrating information from different existing systems, right? They give examples of these enterprise level systems that we talked about. The other systems could be legacy systems, it could be other existing systems that you have. Pulling that information from all of these different systems, integrating all of that information so that when customers, employees, other stakeholders actually in, are um, utilizing that, that particular application, they don't realize that they're getting information from a, a host of different systems. Okay, so it basically tries to kind of hide what's, what's actually happening in the back end. Okay? 